I swear to tell the whole truth, so you got Yes. Your Honor, the State of Tennessee versus Jermaine AGGS 9018213GS 901313 and GS 901811. Please state and spell your name for the record. Alexis Taylor, A L E X I S T A Y L O R. And Ms. Taylor, how do you know the descendant Jermaine A.G.? He went, he was dating my mom. And I need you to speak up. I know this hard. Okay. Yes. How long had he been dating your mother? I don't know how long he's been dating her, but I know how long. I've known he's been around, which was about two years. Okay. Was there something that occurred on September the 21st, 2019, where you had, that resulted in you having to call your mom and? Yes, because he had got in the house. First, he was on the back porch, she had got in the house. And my mom told me if he, mom told me to call her if he would have got in. So I called her. First he was on the stairs. Then we, I went downstairs. And he told me not to call the police. But I called my mom. Told her where he was. He was in, he was in the house by the front door. And she said, okay, she's on her way. And so he had told me to make him a sandwich. And I kept telling him he had to leave. He asked me again to make him a sandwich. And then he asked my sister to make him a sandwich. And so that's when he left. My mom had pulled up. And I don't know what had happened outside, but I know she called the police. Okay. Then on September the 30th, 2019, was there something else that happened? Yes, I was sleeping. And I woke up to a loud scream. Who was it screaming? My mom. And what's your mother? What was your mother's name? Myra Garcia. Okay. And I had called her. I called her phone. It answered and then it hung up. And I texted her if she was okay. And she had texted back yes. But then the next day, it wasn't her. She told me it wasn't her. It was him. Okay. And he had he was beating her. And. Did you see anything that showed that? She had bruises on her face. And do you know whether or not there was a warrant that was taken out on that? Did she call, did she call the police? Yes. Okay. The next day, she had told me that she called the police. She got um, a restraining order and order of protection. Order of protection. And she told me what he had done. She told me that it wasn't her texting the phone. It was him. So that night when you heard the loud scream and you tried to find out, it was actually he that defendant that responded. Yes. By text message. Okay. On October the 6th, 2019, did you, and that would be this Sunday, did you see the defendant on that day? Yes. And what happened? We had, me and my mom and my sister came back from the zoo and 
he was dropped off by these two men in a car. And um, the first time I went to the front door, I didn't see nobody. And then the second time when he was knocking, I went back down there and it was him at the window and he was asking to speak to my mom. And I told my mom, she said she didn't want to talk to him. She wanted him to leave. And so then that's when I told him she wants you to leave and he kept asking to talk to her. Then he was asking where the money was, I guess that she had had. And she said all his stuff was in the front, including the money. And that's when he had asked if he could charge his phone. And my mom said no. And I told him to leave again. He said, okay, but he was still standing there. So I was standing there. That's when he was, I guess he was changing his clothes and then he left. Okay. And on that day, about what time did you get, you and your mom and your sister, what, and what's your sister's name? Caitlin. Caitlin Taylor? Yes. About what time did you all get back from the zoo? Four. Four p.m. About four. Okay. And you said that the defendant came over. This interaction that you just described, was he inside the house, outside? Outside the house. Okay. And during your conversation with him, telling him that he couldn't come in, all his stuff was outside, was the door, was there a door between you? Yes, or? it was the front door. It was locked. Okay, so you never, there was always a barrier between you. This was not a one-on-one -on -one that you had. Yes. Face to face. Okay. Okay. That early in the morning, the, on October the 7th, did you see the defendant again? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us what happened? Um... I was sleeping and I woke up to him kicking, trying to kick my door open and around the doorknob, it was like cracks, like you could tell it was breaking. But when I woke up, he had already kicked, he was kicking it down. So he kicked it open and he came in and started stabbing me. And I ended up on my teddy bear right next to my bed and he just kept striking at me. So I was screaming, I was yelling. That's when my mom came ran, running in and had pushed him. And I, he had hit her, and he hit her in the head. And that's when he we had got up, and he asked my mom for the pin number to her cards. And I'm gonna stop for a second. Was all of this in your bed? Yes. When you said he was striking you, how was he striking you? Was he was he using anything? A knife. You said that your mother came in and got him off of you, and he hit her in the head. Did he hit her in the head with his hand? With the knife. You said he started asking for the PIN number. Yes, to her card. Did she give those to him? Yes. She said he could have, he could take anything he wants as long as he would leave us alone. And we were in my room, and that was when he told us to follow him to my mother's bedroom. So we went and followed him to my mother's bedroom and we stopped at her door. He walked all the way in the room and he was like, come, you need to come in, you need to follow me. So I was telling my mom, I was listening to my mom, we need to leave because right at her door was the stairs and it led to the front door and I kept telling her we need to leave. She wouldn't listen to me. She was like, no, Alexis. That's when he told us to walk in. We walked in and he told us to sit on the bed. We were sitting on the bed. He was asking her questions like, has he, has she slept with another man? Stuff like that. And she hit, he hit her again, but he didn't hit me. He kind of jumped at me, acting like he was going to hit me, but he didn't hit me. And he asked again to the pin number to her cards. She gave, she told him that, and then when we got up and he said, I'm so, he said, I'm surprised you didn't hear your brother screaming. He's already dead. And so that's when we just panicked. Like I told my mom, I said, we need to leave. And she just, she, was, she wasn't speaking to me. She was trying to tell him that he didn't have to do this. And he just kept going on and on and just 
threatening us, saying how he was going to set the house on fire, how he was going to kill us and then kill himself. And at this time, KK, she had ran, when she ran in my room, it was after my mom had pushed you. She had ran in my room and he told her to go in the bathroom. No, so you she, say KK. Are you, Caitlin. Caitlin Taylor, yes. your sister. And how yeah. old is your sister? She's eight. Okay. So she was in the bathroom this whole time. After that, he took us, I guess he heard something because he kind of paused and he was like, you need to follow me. We go downstairs. When you say we, who's we? Me, my mom, and him. Okay. We go downstairs and he takes us to my brother's room. What, what, what's your brother? What, what my brother, Jaden Taylor. And he was laying on the bed and he was bleeding and he was trying to gasp for air and he went and he hit him again in the head and called him a bitch. When he hit him in the head, did he hit him with his hands or did he use the knife? He hit him with the knife. <laughs> We were standing next to my brother's bed and I was just looking at my brother and I couldn't tell where the blood was coming from, but I seen blood and he was gasping for air and he was just, he was moving, but he was dying. And we were standing next to his bed and that's when Jermaine had told us to come sit down next to the door in Jake, my brother's room. And we sat down next to the door, and he had hit her again. When you say he had hit who? My mom. And that's, my mom was just like, you don't have to do this. Why are you doing this? And he was just, he was, he was just going on and on about how, oh, you're playing with me, blah, blah, blah. And you're not answering my calls and stuff like that because she had was ignoring him and he had told me he was like Alexis you think it's funny and I was just sitting there bleeding out because I wasn't really paying attention to where he was stabbing me but I know I was covered in blood and he had he had punctured me like right here and and, and for the record you're talking about on your left side yes my left side and I was like, I need to go to the hospital. I'm bleeding a lot. And he said, you don't care. So he told us to go upstairs and I was directly behind him. And I guess he thought I was trying to escape or something because he had turned around and said, are you, are you trying to run or something? I said, no, 